Um, the name of the band comes from reading Jonathan Livingston Seagull, which is a great little book about flying against the grain. Um, and also the Stranglers had a song called Toiler on the Sea, which in the middle of the song, he yells out a flock of seagulls. Frank and I, we were at the concert when that happened. And I swear to God, he pointed at us and it was like a sign. You're flock a flock of seagulls. Of seagulls. All of us together, mm. it was in the rehearsal room, wasn't it? When well, yeah, you... um, for me, Frank used to uh, cut my hair. Well, we got together to form a band um, when Mike was playing for an, uh, a different band called Tontrix, and I was actually doing some roadieing for them. And uh, one day we're coming back from a, a late night show somewhere, and you know, we just started talking, and we said, why don't we start a band? And then Frank was right there. <laughs> <laughs> we looked for a guitar player, and as I said, you know, uh, Paul wasn't there at the time, but we went through with the guitar players, found Paul, away we flew. I think when we started, we were futuristic. Now that has caught up with us, and that's why people are into us now because they mm. finally caught up to where we were when we did all these songs. Back to the future. Stupid things that you never, trivia you never really think about, like he'd say to me, Frankie, Frankie! And, and I'd go, Scotty, Scotty, and he's having, he'd be in the bush and his hair would be everywhere, and he'd be asleep and I'd stick a ciggy in his mouth and take a picture of him. <laughs> I remember that. It's just the trivia, just what people don't smoke. see. Yeah. That, and maybe Madison Square Gardens. When the stage was empty at the Hollywood Bowl and literally yeah. going, the Beatles stood right here. Yeah. And now we're here. And we're from the same place as them. So. I think playing the Royal Court in Liverpool was... It was a pretty, wild one. Pretty special. Yeah, it was a wild one. That was good because your parents were there and your family were there. We were first starting the band and we were playing um, a club in, I think it was Coventry or Birmingham in England, called the General Wolf, oh. and it was a punk club. And everybody's there with, you know, with, with their mohawks and everything. And, um, so we're playing, you know, we're halfway through the show, and suddenly we look out, and there's this old guy, and he's right in the middle of the crowd. And we thought, oh, he looks familiar. He was our dad, Mike and I's dad. And he was in the middle of all the punks. <laughs> he wasn't pogoing, but he but he was fitted right in with them, you know. And he's right, like two rows from the front. Really, it was an accident. I had my hair all spiked up and blonde, like a like a Ziggy Stardust. And the way I remember it, I was in the mirror trying to get it to all stand up, and Frank just kind of went. Hey, get down a bit in the mirror, scoot down, put his hand on top of my head, flattened the whole thing so it fell down like this, but the sides, which I'd used spray on, stayed up. And I think our manager basically just said, stop messing about and get on stage. So I walked out with it like that, and I saw people pointing at it. Did you know what he was that thing he did? And it was, yeah, and it was, it was born from that because as soon as I realized that's what they were looking at, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to embellish this and... And become worked, a, become a, the star man, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it worked, didn't it? Yeah. It did, right? It was, it, was, <coughs> it was a master move. Yeah. The story goes that we were late for the sh you know, we were late going on for a show, and Mike didn't have his hair done. Well, he didn't really have a hairdo, but you know, Frank just came along, patted him on the top of the head, pushed up the sides of his hair, and said, "Right, we're on. We have to go." <laughs> The band were huge, the look was incredible, and when I see us the way we were, I have no difficulty realizing why we got so big, because we were like, you know, we, we were focused on exactly where we needed to yeah. be. The look, the sound, everything was, was right. I think my favorite song would probably be the more you live, the more you love. Uh, I would say my favorite song from the Seagulls is Wishing. My favorite, se favorite Seagull song would be I Run. Um, I like Man Made. Uh, 
I just um, well, I, th I think we, we we had like the music and some lyrics, but uh, Mick said, you know, it didn't have a chorus, did it? Yeah, yeah. It just sounded, I, 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 as I said, it sounded like a space age or something. So. I think it shows a different side of what could be done with our music. Uh, something that when we recorded some of these songs, you know, there was no way that we would think of an orchestra. So to put it on now and change the sound, they still sound, they're still great songs. Mm. We so, just couldn't afford it then. Yeah. Uh, my message to the fans is keep in, keep listening. I really do appreciate the, the, the way you love this band. And if it wasn't for you people, uh, I don't think we'd be sitting here now. I would say thanks for listening to us for all this time. Don't stop now. Um, this orchestral stuff is great, so take it on um, board. I'd like to thank the, the fans for all the love and support over the years, and uh, keep listening. So, you know, you never know what's going to happen on the horizon.